everyone. Um, we will go ahead and get started. Um, can you hear me okay? If you need to like give me a thumbs up or chat or something, I just wanna make sure that you can hear me. Perfect, thank you, Jake, man. I appreciate that. Thanks, Bryson. So, um, hey, we have a small group today. So if y'all want to unmute at any time to kind of talk about things, I think that's gonna work out fine. Uh, initially, I, I did this training in about two hours and 30 minutes, and I've kind of broken it up this time just to kind of slow down and kind of walk through things a little bit more clearly. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started, and um, we'll just I'm gonna break into this out of this for just a little bit. And here we go. So I'm Jerry Brawls. Most of you guys know me. Um, you'll also see that Amy Johns is in the audience today. And um, I want to be really good so that I can make a, a good impression on her. And she is my boss, if you didn't know that. Um, so I'm at Fayette County Public Schools, just like all you guys. If you need to email me, please do that. I know that you will have questions after this is over. My view board is a lot of information and I am learning all the time. Um, and if you find something that you're a little stuck on, I'm probably stuck on that too. And I will research it and dig into it and we can see what we can find. First thing that I want you to do is this. Could you go ahead and make a copy of this presentation? Yeah, join me, Bryson has already done that. It looks like Amy's in here too. Go to this address right here. You may have to open up a new tab on your uh, device that you're using and type in bit.ly slash my view board and it's a capital M and capital B. Okay, I would like you all to join me so that you can make a copy of this presentation. This is going to be your notes for today. Hopefully you can give most of your attention to me as I kind of go through things. And then this will be uh, just on the back burner so you can look at it later um, and check out, you know, any questions I may have gone over or things that maybe you just missed on the first time around, okay? So after you've joined me, please go over here to file and make a copy of the entire presentation. And that is yours to keep. Um, that will make a static file wherever you put that in your Google Drive. Now, I will continue to update this slide deck. So at some point, you may wanna come back to this address and check out and see if there's anything new that I've added. Um, I will definitely be adding more things to this. All right, so here is our agenda for today. Um, we have the website. So it's a little confusing because my view board has been around for a while and it's gone through some different name changes. For you guys that are older, you remember um, like SkyDrive, OneDrive for Business, OneDrive, you know all those name changes happen. But this is actually called whiteboard that we're going into today. But I'm going to differentiate it between the website and what's on my computer. Okay, there's two things we're going into. So the website we'll go into, and we'll also talk about the My View Board Whiteboard app. Now, my thought is that you're going to be using this mostly with the app. You're probably not going to be online using this because you have a lot more functionality with the whiteboard app that's on your computer. Okay. So now this is today's agenda. Next time around, which is going to be next week, same time, same place, we will do this part of the agenda and this is for next time. It will be more interactive and I apologize that this first part isn't a, isn't a, a lot of interactivity, but um, hopefully next time you'll, you'll get to participate more. If you do join me for next time, please bring your iPhone if you have one. Um, if you don't have one, maybe you can borrow an old one that somebody else has for some reason. It's a little bit more interactive with the iPhone. Okay, we're just going to take a few seconds here to kind of get a little information from me as to what you intend or what you want to see with this presentation. And I will try to adjust it as I can. I definitely have some things planned out, but it also may be something that maybe I need to plan for next time. And so here we go. Um, if you would open up a new tab and go to menti.com. Yep, just go to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com. Looks like a few people are still joining us. That's all good. Okay. And by the way, if you have just joined us, I do want you to make a copy of the slide deck. And again, just go to file and make a copy and you'll be good to go. 
Um, this session is going to be recorded as well. So I will post that in our um, NTI site that we have for OIT. You guys know where that is. All right, so let's do a little interactivity here with Minty. And you go to Minty.com, M-E-N-T-I.com. You're going to use the code right here. It's popping up. It's uh, type in the code 1901914. And this is the address that you're going to. If you could just answer this question, what do you use currently to annotate or to textualize your lesson? Yes, textualize is a word. I looked it up today, made sure it was. Um, but in other words, what are you doing, you know, just on the fly so that you can kind of, you know, draw something with your kids or you can, you know, line something out or kind of highlight an area. Maybe it's a picture. Maybe it's just your lesson for the day. If you use anything, what is it that you use? So I know some teachers, they use a PowerPoint every day or a Google slide deck and they have everything typed out all together. Um, they don't really, if they do any examples, they have it all typed out, so they don't plan on using anything uh, to annotate or anything like that. But I know also people are, are relying on Jamboard and Whiteboard.fi and others. Okay. All right, let's give a few, let's do about 30 more seconds here. Looks like we have about nine participants. So we'll get a few more answers here. I like, I like Minty.com really easily. Uh, or a lot, um, rather, because it's easy to use. Um, you get feedback really quickly. It's so easy just to go to a website and type in a code to get some great feedback. All right, so most people are using Jamboard. Uh, I totally get that because we've kind of pushed that out and you know we, we've talked about that with um, some of our OIT trainings and so forth. Looks like a few people are using the phone or webcam. I suspect that when we go back to in-person, Many more people may be using this document camera and maybe they just can't be doing it right now with remote learning. All right, good information. Okay. Jamboard is, is a great uh, whiteboard feature or app. You may find out that my viewboard is just so much more powerful that you're going to stick with it. So who knows? You may change your mind after today, what you see. All right, let's go to the next question here. All right, same place, but you have a different code. Or maybe you didn't have the same code, I'm not really sure. Uh, 1901914. So the question is, what do you hope my view board can do to help you teach? Now, this is gonna be a word cloud. You can enter up to three different words or phrases if you want, okay? So what do you hope that my view board can do to help you teach or help your teachers teach if you're in a position where you're helping teachers like Bryson is? All right, awesome, we're getting the hang of this. So engage, interact, assess. All right, looks like Stephanie's coming in for a second time here. Hopefully she has a better connection. All right, hybrid, yeah. Um, hybrid's gonna be something to definitely think about here, you know, as the K2s are um, going back pretty soon. And hopefully the rest of us will go back pretty soon and follow that lead, we'll see. Um, a microphone, yeah. Um, there's not a microphone on a my view board that I know of, but you can connect with a webcam and that would give you a microphone. Or you could get an external mic as well. So uh, model learning, display learning, perfect. Assessment, react, extend the classroom. Those are all great things, I love those. Okay, very nice job. All right, that gives me, that really makes me want to do a whole lot more because today is going to be very basic, I think. Um, but next time we'll do a lot more of the student engagement, the more the interaction, the more model learning and so forth. So that's going to be great next time. So we're on the right track. Um, a lot of these you'll see next time and you'll see a little bit of it today too. So perfect. Thanks for the interaction there. <laughs> no price in this is not a microphone train. Uh, hopefully you're, you're at the right one, Bryce. And I know you have a good sense of humor, so I guess we'll see, right? All right, I'm gonna close that out for us. All right, so let's go on a little bit. Um, cracks me up. Okay, now I don't want you to do this right now because you're going to be uh, 
looking at some things and I want you, you know, you can go back through this uh, video that you have, or you can go back through the slide deck that I have. Um, you, when you go to myviewboard.com for the first time, if you've never been there before, they'll ask you a few things. They will ask you some questions. And I have a little display over here, some things that they'll ask you and so forth. Um, everybody in Fayette County Public Schools, every teacher has an account to use my view board. So it's all good. We got this free from ViewSonic because we are a, a big ViewSonic customer. Um, and the guy who does, who is our rep, he's just a fantastic guy. So this is free to us. Uh, we can put it on school devices. You can put it on your home device. Um, right now, you know, I'm at home. I put it on my home computer. I put it on my laptop. You know, just put it wherever you want to use it. It's great to use. So I'm going to go into myviewboard.com, okay? And if you would, just hang around and uh, don't go there right now because I don't want you to get hung up on all those questions and logging in and so forth, okay? Now, a couple of things here. Um, myviewboard.com is... If you're using a Chromebook, which I know that a lot of teachers are not using a Chromebook anymore for presenting uh, during remote learning because there are Zoom issues, I understand. Um, but students can, can go here as well and they can, um, they can actually throw and throwing is something we're gonna do next time. And throwing means that they can participate by sending a picture. Uh, it could be something that they've drawn, you know, with their hand, like on a phone. Um, or it could be a picture that they've actually taken of a snapshot. Um, and there's other files that they can send as well. And there's interactivity with that. So that will be next time. But this is how it looks for me. I'm already logged in. You can see that I'm logged in because there's my avatar and there's my viewboard name and my email address and so forth, okay? So we're just gonna kind of go around here and uh, not dig into the weeds too far, but myviewboard.com is where you want to start because that is where you create your defaults. And defaults will be what the app brings up. And I'll show those to you in just a minute because it'll make a little bit more sense. So along here, this is where I can throw to a different whiteboard. And again, that's sending a file. Um, over here is where you can share your screen with another whiteboard. And that may be something that you want to try out, you know, later on. We're not going to get into that today. There is a remote control feature. Um, this right here is what we're going to talk about with the follow me settings. And then downloads are here. And then we'll talk over here a little bit too. Okay. Now, over here, these are things that you can look into. Um, there are clips that you can look into that you can use that, you know, my, v or my view board and ViewSonic have put together. There's a wiki with some really good information and you can look at that later too. These are just kind of things that you can kind of dive into and I want to point out a few things. Um, classroom is something that looks very promising. If you notice, it says early access. Right now it's in beta. Um, they are still working out some bugs on it. I have not seen a training that's a full blown training on that yet. Um, I look for videos and it seems like they're still kind of working out some things there. Okay, but let's go up here and I want to focus on some things with follow me settings. The follow me settings will follow you kind of like the Chrome settings do as you go from one view board to another. Okay, because you're, when you're going to the view board, you're going to be logging in. Okay, and those settings will follow you. So I'm going to click there. And this is where you'll get started. Okay, one of the things that you want to do is for your theme, you want to select education because that will give you access to some of the education themes instead of like the business sector or even sports or something like that. Um, just some few, few things I want to highlight. I have Showtime on. I'll show you what that looks like when we get into the app. These are all settings for how your My View Board settings will be as soon as you log on to a big screen My View Board or the app on your computer. Okay. So other settings and so forth. Over here are cloud integrations. And this is where you can actually go into my view board and you can pull things out for you to open up or to use inside your session, okay? So all of us have a Google Drive account. So one thing that you'll do is you'll go to bind and you'll put in your credentials and your password and then it will be set up for you when you log into the my view board app, okay? If you have other things that you use, you can definitely bind those as, as well. Binding is just meaning you're connecting them, okay? 
All right, there's bookmarks, um, and we'll look at that a little bit later too. Background, this is the default background that will appear every time you use my viewboard, the app. And mine right there, it looks just like this. Um, you'll see that in just a minute, but you can select which one you want as your default. And you can change that at any time. And when you do that, just make sure that you're updating it. Okay, sometimes it has a save button down here. Um, but if you say set as default, that will be that selection. And you'll see this in just a moment. All right, there's a magic line pin, which I think that elementary kids will just love. Um, and who knows, high school kids may like it too. Um, but you can select what that magic pin does as a default right through here. And you'll see that mine is like that 3D cube looking feature. And you'll see that in just a moment too. So again, these are just things you can set up as default every time you get into the app. And then there's a shape pin. You can do like the ladybug. You can do smiley faces. You can do the sun. I'm going to change this to the sun right here. It says default. And now it's already set. There's nothing else to do. It's really easy to use. Okay. So again, those were the follow me settings. All right. Let's go over here. If I'm going too fast, let me know. If I need to go back, back up, let me know that too. All right. So we did the follow me. Go to edit account. That's really important for you to do. Um, once you log in for the first time, they're going to give you a My View Board name, and it's going to be something that's probably ridiculous, something that you'll want to change. It may be your email address. That may be the default. But you can go right here and change that to something that's a little bit easier for the kids to type and for you to recognize once you're logged in. Okay, So you will want to go there and do that. Also, you see my avatar here. You can put a personal avatar by choosing what image you want here. Okay. All right, the rest of this, I don't think I'd do anything for that. You may want to change this uh, sign out time, which will sign you out automatically. That may be something that you want to change as well. All right, and then you can change your password and, and sign out a few other things. Um, there's, a, there's a way to change the language that you have for my view board. And I do, I do not mess with that at all because I don't want to ever be stuck trying to figure that out. All right, so that is the website, okay, in a nutshell. All right, so I'm gonna close that out now. Do a little clean. Oh, I got one more thing to do. I am so sorry, one more thing. I'm gonna do Control Shift T, that will bring my, bring it back real quick. Um, right here is where you can download the My View Board app. Okay, so if you click right here, you'll see everything that you can download. Now, this is in your notes, but the only things that I'm looking at are the whiteboard app, which we'll do in just a minute, the display app, which lets you mirror a Chromebook or a laptop to an IFP. So that's going to be really helpful if your teachers are tethered to, you know, this cable going around the room or they think they're stuck at their desk. If they're on a laptop or a Chromebook, they can move around the room and it can mirror to your IFP. Or if you have a desktop that's running a projector, then it can mirror to that desktop. Okay. In other words, it's going to make it big. Wherever you are, you can make that your presentation mirroring device. So that's display. We'll talk about that next time. Then the companion app is um, what you'll use on your phone and what the kids can use on their phone to interact. Okay, we'll talk about that next time too. But the big one today is white, whiteboard. Now, if you're a Mac person, wah, 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 there is not a whiteboard app for the Mac. Uh, why? Because ViewSonic is making these huge screens and they all have PCs on the back of them. So they're making whiteboard app for the PC. And so your download will be right here. Now, if you don't have rights to download onto your home, uh, I'm sorry, on your school machine, put in a help desk ticket. Okay, write it out, say, hey, I would like to have the whiteboard, my view board app downloaded to my machine. Uh, Bryson has a question, can they interact from Chromebook or just iOS? Yes, uh, Bryson, they can interact from Chromebook. Um, they would just go to the myviewboard.com um, website and that's how they interact. So if they're using Chromebook, Absolutely, it works that way too. Um, I just always think of the phone because I think the teacher will be using that a lot. So, but yes, absolutely, good question. All right, so I'm gonna close that out. Remember, that was the downloads right here. Uh, we're trying to get people or David Samus to possibly put that in 
software center, but that hasn't happened just yet. So we'll keep on trying for that to happen. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hopefully stay with all my directions and my agenda here the best I can. But I'm gonna get into the whiteboard app. And once you've downloaded it, um, it's right here. It looks like this. I'm gonna double click on mine to open it. And this is loading a little slowly, I've noticed. Um, if at first you don't see this login right here, then there's a little button in the bottom right hand corner. It's a little picture, a little profile picture. Click on that because a lot of people get hung up on that. Click on that and make sure that pops up so you can log in. Now, I'm going to log in with my phone because I can use the companion app to do that. By the way, we'll talk about that next time. But I can just use my phone and point, and point to the QR code and then it logs me in without me having to type anything. Alternately, I could have typed it all out, but why do that if you can do it with a QR code? Okay, notice now it knows me. This is my board. Remember that Jerry Broyles where I changed the default name? That's where that is. I have my avatar showing that that's who uh, I am. So remember that feature where I said, turn the time on? That's the time up here. And you can turn that and toggle that on and off. Now, we're gonna go through this in depth um, because you need to know these things because you will have times where you will get stuck and you'll say, oh, what do I do have, have what do I have to do to get out of this? And you'll, we'll figure that out for you. You'll figure it out too. We have four different menus, floating menus that we're going to talk about. There's a menu here for the background. There's a menu here for interactivity. And if, in the Chrome browser, which we'll talk about, Chromium browser, it's not the Chrome browser. Um, this is our Windows toolbar over here. And then we have the settings toolbar up here. So a lot to cover, but we'll start with the basics here. First, remember this is my color of my background that I wanted. Um, you can go over here. This is the bottom left-hand corner. Let me click on that. And it knows my default, so I can change it here and I can apply that default right there if I want. And we'll close it out and there it is. So you can make up your own image to your background, whatever you feel like creating that can save as a PNG or a JPEG, you can upload it and make your own background anytime you want. Okay, I'm gonna keep it simple so that everybody can see it really well. All right, so um, these are different backgrounds you can have. I've uploaded one. Over here, there's a palette, okay? And you can choose all the different colors that you want. If that's, if these are not the colors you want, you can create your own perfect color that you want by going through the millions of colors you can choose from with the hex code and so forth. Okay, you can do that. Down here, um, and you can also make it transparent. So if you want some of your background to show, you know, the windows background behind it, you can make it more transparent and more opaque. Down here, you can make it a gradient. Um, I don't really like those that much, but you may wanna play with some that you think are fantastic. Now, to change this gradient, it's using all these colors right here. If you move these sliders around, you can have fewer or more choices for your gradient background. Okay, you can play with that too. Just move the sliders around. If you want it to be monochrome of some sort, then you can do that and you get a nice gray scale. So, all right. Now me, I just want to be solid. So I'm gonna choose a color and be done. Okay, I don't need all that distraction for me. All right, the next button is using different backgrounds um, just to help you teach different things in your classroom or to even have some kind of starter question that you could have. So you could have this as your background and then you could type inside that and have some kind of starter question for your kids that day. Um, there's a map down here, which is really nice to talk about, really easy. So if you wanna talk about you know, the Panama Canal before we would start right here, if we went from New York, and had to go over to you know San Diego to a port. We'd have to go all the way around and all that. Then we you know shall talk about the Panama Canal and how much time that saves and so forth. So just different things, right? We'll erase all that. And get back to where I was talk, talking about. All right. So those are different themes, um, different things that you can have. This is gonna be great for our music teachers. This is gonna be great just to talk about 
you know, list for today of things that you may want to do. Okay. All right. Now, this um, this is uh, the interactive my view board backgrounds that they have. Um, these are some that you can choose as well. These are ones that they've created recently, and they continue to add to them. Uh, they have different pictures in here, which are nice, you know, talking points for maybe assignments or uh, talking about a story or whatever. So different things you can do there. Now, this next one, it looks like a, a little computer or something, maybe a little hard drive. I, for the longest time, could not figure it out, but this is what happens. Once you upload an image as your background, then it starts to remember those images. So you, you'll have nothing here to begin with, but once you start adding images, then it will remember those. You can pull them out anytime you want to. Okay. So while I'm talking about that, I want to remember this. Over here, I'm going to jump a little bit back and forth. There's a hand. This is an infinite campus that you're on not the software you use for grades, but this is an infinite campus that you can move around and zoom in and out, okay? That's gonna be really helpful to move slides or, or move uh, data around if you're using that or moving anything that you've annotated onto the, onto the background, just sliding it around and getting it out of your way, okay? Or zooming in. So remember that hand does that, that lets you pan around the canvas, okay? So infinite canvas, not infinite campus. All right, this last one is just connects to your hard drive and you can bring in images from there. Okay, once you do that, remember they'll show up here just like we had before. Okay, now I'm going to make this a little bit more clear. I'm going to change my background to just the blue. And this next one is just a grid. This is going to be great for our math teachers. Now for me, this grid is way too fine. So what I can do is I can go to the hand and I can zoom in and out as much as I need to so that it becomes a little bit more clear for whatever quadrant I wanna show or whatever size I need for my grid, okay? All right, you can turn that on and off by clicking on it. There's a confidential um, watermark that you can use, I don't have any use for that. This turns off that top right hand corner information right there. So if you want to turn that off, you can toggle it, it goes on and off. All right, that was a lot. That was just one of the toolbars. So we're going to take a little breather here and let's we'll see if there's any questions about those before I move on. I want to take a little break, make sure I get some hydration here. All right, remember some of that. Hey, you can Jerry, set. it's Robin Foster. Hey, hey Robin. Hi, Good. I have a really silly question. Um, when you were showing the different backgrounds that we could use with like bell ringers and things like that, so does that mean that there are already a bunch of pre made templates that we could use like in Jamboard or slides? Um, there is some, there are some things you can use for templates. Um, they have activities that they have created, and I will hopefully show those to you today. If not, I'll definitely show it to um, the next group. Um, I've gone into those, Robin, a little bit, and they seem more like a like maybe a Google slide deck where some things are can be manipulated, moved around, and so forth. Um, it's a mixed bag. Some are really good, and some are need some help. I think. Gotcha. So, uh, but, but they're all kind of like, you know, they're developing a lot of those and some are very basic, which could be useful. And some are really involved in quite, and done quite well, so. Gotcha. Is it kind of like, do you remember the um, website, the Smart Exchange where you could go and search? Yeah. So, yeah. There, so there's Ab something kind of like that as well? Absolutely. Um, and it is kind of like that. Um, I, I think Smart Exchange um, was, was a little bit better because it had been around a lot longer. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, my view board, a lot of this is, is new and it's changing all the time. So, uh, Great, but you'll find some, you. yeah. So you'll find some things and we'll try to show that to you in just a moment. All right, I'm gonna go over here to the Windows toolbar. Um, this is where you're gonna be doing most of your work and it's really great to use. This one right at the top, um, it allows you to toggle between my view board and Windows really quickly. So I just click on that. 
And then if I want to um, show a video or, you know, I can open up a picture here. Actually, that popped over on my other screen. That's okay. That's my daughter. Uh, just a picture of her. You can, you know, go through here. You can annotate whatever you, were, whatever you want. Um, and you can add those things and, you know, you can erase. You can add different images or different shapes if you want. All your annotations can be done right here. You can also record it. So that's a great feature if you're doing a lot, maybe with spreadsheets, or maybe you're doing a, a video that you stop the video in the middle and you start doing some annotation on it. Um, those things are better worked with inside their own app, like Excel or even a PowerPoint or maybe VLC media player. Those are gonna work well in Windows and you probably won't use those in my before but you still have your annotation features right here that you can use, okay? Now, I do have to remember this. If I wanna close this out, notice I'm annotating here, so I don't do that. Um, you have to click on the mouse right here to get your mouse click back, and now you can close it out, okay? And I have the annotation that still st stays there. When I go back to whiteboard, and I go back, the annotation is gone. So if you want to save that annotation, you need to clip it, uh, using this feature right here, which will allow you to take a full screenshot and save it as an image. Okay, I know it's a lot to think about. All right, so that was just the Windows toggle. Um, this is wirelessly presenting. We're not really going to get into that today. That will be more beneficial maybe at school, uh, but not where, while we're hybrid right now. This is our screenshot feature. So I'm going to bring up a lesson here. Uh, let's see. I can bring up a lesson. Let's see, where did I put that? Let me think about this. Um, all right, this is one of my lessons that I saved. I'm going to open it back up. So this does kind of look, you know, work like Smart Notebook where you can save your lessons. Um, you have different pages and so forth. So down here where the arrows are, you can toggle your pages going back and forth. And this is just a lesson that I made about conversion, convergence of lines. Um, I thought it was really cool when I took this picture that you know there are parallel lines, but they're actually converging. And this is just an annotation that I did on top of it. Now, if I added more to this, if I want to say this as an image, I can go right here and I can do a little screenshot and it saves the entire screenshot here. I can use that. I can make it a little bit bigger if I want. Okay, and I can do something else with that. If I want to save it as an image, I can do that as well. Okay. All right, so um, you can also do like a freestyle screenshot. You know, just kind of drag and cover, you know, whatever area you want to do a screenshot. Maybe it's that I want a screenshot of, and it just saves what I've done. That's not the background, it saves the rest of the picture. Okay, so there's some use for that for sure. Um, I want to get rid of that and get it out of the way. So put that in the trash. Um, you can do some recording here. You can record your screen as you're doing some annotation or as you're moving objects around or as you're teaching. It also records your voice if you have a microphone. Now our view boards, I don't believe they have a microphone, but if you have like an external microphone like we talked about with Bryson earlier, you can connect one of those or if you're using your webcam, you can use that as a microphone as well. This last one is an audio recording if you want to make an audio recording at any time. Okay. I want to try to be cognizant of my time left here. And I want to try to close or finish around 5.05 or 5.10. Um, if you can stick, oh, we got until 5.15, so it's an hour. So I got a little bit of time here. I'm good. So um, this right here is just moves the toolbar around. If you um, are left-handed or right-handed, that may be a, a great feature definitely when you get back on your own view board, if you have one at school. Down here, um, this is pretty cool. It's actually a great way for your kids to actually save the notes that you have prepared for them. Um, this is where you save your, your lessons that you've created. It's also where you can go to open them. So it does all that. But a nice, and you can export them as well. You can export to a PDF. You can print them out if you have a desire to do so. I do not. 
But here's something that you may want to try. I don't know how well this works on Zoom, but we can try it. If you have a, have a phone, I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to share a QR code. So I'll click Yes. And you can use your phone. It's preparing the QR code. So hold on just a second. If you use your phone and you scan that, you will get a PDF of what this lesson is. So it's pretty nice. I can also alternately go to this address right here, HTTPS and then a bunch of garbage initials. You can type that in. The kids can type that in. You can save that as your notes for them in Canvas or Google Classroom or what you're using. And that's a nice PDF of today's notes. Bryson said he got it perfect, perfect. So it worked really well. I've tried it with my phone and it's a nice little way to capture it. Wait, did anybody else, was anybody else able to do that? A little bit of feedback here if you tried it. Bryson, did you think it was a pretty good PDF of the notes? Yeah, it's pretty nice. I'm impressed with it. So, um, you know, and, and definitely, when we're remote learning, we don't really know what the kids are taking, what kind of notes they're taking, unless you you know, have them turn it in or something. But why shouldn't they have a copy of your notes that you've done? So this is a great way to share that out. All right. All right, down here, this is the magic box. And it's got a lot of stuff in it. And I'm going to save that to last because it's, it's, it's deep. It's got some stuff in it. All right, I'll come back to that. It looks like little apps are popping out of it, and that's exactly what it is. It's full of stuff. This is the hand that lets you pan around again so you can move things wherever you need to. Um, again, you can move your images as a whole. Okay. This lets you select different images just one at a time. So I can select this, and I can click on it. And also, you'll get these, uh, what they call the adorning tools. And this lets you do a few things. Um, the garbage can, we know what that does. We don't want to do that. It also lets you lock the image. So if you want to make sure it doesn't move, um, you can do some annotation on it. And then you can actually save that image. Um, I'm going to unlock that right now. There's a few things. It let, This spins it. That may be great for some kids. I don't know. You can flip it. You can layer it. You can do some color removal here right inside the app. Um, you can do a fit to screen. You can crop things. Okay. A lot of cool things you can do here with the adorning apps. And all you have to do is just click on the image to do that. All right. I wish we had time to do all those fun things, but there's so much more to do. All right, the next one is annotation. I'll go back to the first one I did. Uh, maybe the third one. Okay. Um, if you click on that, you get three basic colors. If you click on it again, you'll get a host of different colors. And again, you can choose any color in the rainbow that you want here and make that your color of the day that you're choosing, whatever it may be. But they have some that you can just choose that are basic. This right here is a little slider to increase the width. So it's big right now. If I go back, I can make that really narrow. Okay, I can choose that. Um, and then you have some opacity issues um, if you wanna make it a little bit more transparent. You can do that for sure just by using the slider. Now, down here, this is where the cool stuff comes in and things that I'm like, what else can we do with this? So here's the pen. Okay, here's the brush. You know the difference between the two. We've all done paint. There's highlighters that you can choose from. You can highlight things. Um, this is like a little pointer tool, so it disappears. Also, on your phone, when you use the companion app, you can do that remotely. So if you're in the classroom in the background, in the back, and you're you know using personal supervision, you're you know, like you have a kid who's talking too much and you just kind of walk over there, just kind of give some presence. You can use your app on your phone, the companion app, to actually use as a laser pointer and as a highlighter just by moving your phone around. So it's cool. It's, it's a great thing to use. Um, let me go back here. This is AI. So the AI pen. It just shows me how terrible of an artist I am. But I think it's going to be a lot of fun for some of the kids if they want to come up and try it and maybe do something. You know, maybe they're drawing a cat or something. I'm going to try my best to draw a cat. I'm going to show you what this looks like. Um, please don't make fun of my cat drawings. You can later if you want to email and tell me how bad it was. Or you can send me your own Pictionary cat that you have. 
it almost looks like a devil. Well, at least it's figuring out that it's an animal. So here's a raccoon that I can choose from. But the gist is this, you can draw, hey, there's a cat face, it, it actually made it in there. So you can click on that. Come on now, cat. And you can bring it out into your environment that you want, okay? So you can draw what you're looking at, see what kind of clip art there is. If you're at a loss for words like I am, that, you know, a lot of times that's gonna be great fun. Okay, so I throw that away. I can start over. And I think during our training with Randy, he made like a boat. And my goodness, that's a good looking boat that he made. And you can tell I am not close to the water because I don't know what one looks like. But there's one right there. You can click on it, drag it out, and use it part as part of your lesson. Okay, so AI pin, pretty cool feature. Now, um, this last one is remember I selected that default of a sunshine. See, it's right there, a little sunshine right there. This can be your shape pin. So you can just do some lot of magical stuff, you know, you know, wow your kids with these different features of like a different kind of shape pin. You can go back here and change the shape to something else and so on. All right, lots of fun. All right, I'm going to click right here, the next one. And by the way, um, I get a little confused myself because I don't remember there being a ladybug here, but what it is, is it remembers the last thing that you chose. So I oftentimes will go back here and just click on this. So then I know, oh yeah, I'm back to my normal self. This is the regular stylus that I've been using. Okay, I'll we'll click out of that, clean some of that up. This is just a eraser. Um, you can erase, I'll do a little annotation here. And you can toggle back and forth. So if it's just a regular eraser, it's just going to erase parts. If you want to erase like a, a section, just kind of do that smart board thing that we've done before. And it'll erase each entity. Sometimes I have to do it twice. Okay. Or you can erase the entire sheet and start over. Okay, if you want to do that. All right, now there's also a back button here, front and back. So if you messed up, you have to do an undo. Just go ahead and click back and you can get all those back from where you had it before, which is really sweet. I love that feature because I mess up a lot. All right, underneath the eraser is the shapes tool and it gives you like three primary shapes really quickly. If you want others, then just land on that and you can change your color. I'll change it to red here. And you can change different shapes and so forth. You can put a table in there if you want. Um, and you can fill it with different colors. You can do 3D shapes down here. So I can make uh, some kind of cone if I want. All right, you know, perfect. And then you can annotate, you can add in dimensions and so forth if you want. Um, great, easy way to create some shapes and do some math. Over here, I really like this one because if I'm doing some graphing, and I'm gonna change this a little bit here. Um, I'm gonna go right here and bring out my grid paper and I'm gonna move some of this around. So I'm gonna get rid of this guy. Uh, let's see, I'm just get rid of that too. Let's do a whole erase here, clean all that up. All right, I'm gonna get my hand here and zoom in a little bit. So it makes it uh, a good size for me to do some math on. But if I go back to my shapes here and I get this one right here, that's a solid angle. Oh, here's one solid angle right here. Um, it, it's, it's two angles. It's like an angle together, two rays put together. And I can draw that. And that allows me to draw something that's nice and straight that I actually can work with. If I tried to do this uh, freehand, I would totally mess that up and it'd be awful. But now I can talk about quadrant one because I have that in there. Um, if I needed to rotate that, go back to my hand here. I think you can rotate, well, maybe not. Oh, yeah, um, I can grab that right there to rotate it. Now I can talk about quadrant two and so on, if you get the idea. If I'm, if I'm messing up mathematically, somebody jump in and correct me. All right, here's our table that you can put on here if we want, um, all that is good stuff. All right, I'm gonna add a page. Now down here is where you can add a page and that just kind of cleans up what I was doing and I can turn the grid off, okay? Remember, you can go back and forth with your arrows here 
to whatever pages you're working on. Okay. All right, now this last one. Um, oh, and by the way, all those pages are right here. Notice I have three here. I can see what those pages are. It says three because I think I've added three new ones to my lesson maybe, uh, but I can see all the pages I've had so far here. And I can go back and forth between those really easily. All right, now, this is typing or handwriting text. So let's kind of go into that. And I just click on that and I get a T. Now I know that I have some text here that I can type out. And I can say this is the part of our lesson. And if I want to make that a little bit bigger, I can highlight it just like you do any other text editor, make it larger, change the colors and so forth. You know, if I want a blue, I probably don't want blue, maybe I want a red color. There we go. And I can click off of it. That's a terrible looking red. Now, if I want to do some more editing, I definitely want to change that color because it doesn't look well. I'll just go with the black color here. Um, it also, uh, allows you to do, you know, like centering and right justify, left justify and all that stuff. But it also has the immersive reader in here. So if you're familiar with Microsoft's immersive reader, it's, it's one of the best readers out there, I think. And I can click on this right here. And it takes me into the immersive reader. And I'm gonna go ahead and play that. I think you should be able to hear that through, um, yeah, I played music earlier, so you should be able to hear it through my computer. This is the start of our lesson. Okay, so you can use that in your classroom. Um, maybe if you're using this as a center, maybe it's something that the kids go up to the IFP and they actually have it read to them. It's unfortunate that it doesn't read on screen, but it actually takes them into the immersive reader to read it. But again, if you're working with students who have trouble reading in the first place, this will be great for them. So if you have text on your screen, they can just highlight it and start the reading, okay? Then you have uh, settings here where you can change the reading, uh, the voice and so forth, so on. All right, now, let me get rid of this. By the way, if you get stuck, which I had before, if this was too, you know, too close to the edge, remember you can always grab your canvas and move it around Okay, so if you get stuck, just, again, just grab your canvas, move it around, and I'm going to try to get rid of this right here, and it's done. Okay, remember, this is your to move your objects around. This one is. This one is to move the canvas, you know, make it larger and smaller, in and out, zoom in, zoom out. Now, there's also a handwriting feature here, which I'll talk about right now. To get to that handwriting feature, click on the T here for text until it looks like a handwritten A. And this is artificial intelligence to recognize your handwriting. So I'm gonna try this out and see how we can do. I'm just gonna write the word math and see how we do here. As you know, I'm not a very good artist. You saw my cat. So um, once I get that done, I can then go here, which is like a conversion from handwriting to actual text. And it actually recognized it. It made it pretty small but you can see the word math there. Then I can click on that, go to my selection tool here, click on it, and I can make that larger if I wanted to. So if you're at the IFP, you know, you're at the board itself, you're using your, your finger or the, uh, the pen to actually write, you can do some letter recognition, hand recognition there to actually get it to be typed out. For me, it's probably about, I don't know, 90% of, of how well I type or handwrite, so it picks it up pretty well. Okay, that was the Windows toolbar, except for the most magical part yet. So we're gonna get into that right now. Let me clean this up. Just do a little clear there. All right, this is the magic box. Okay, there is so much here. So I'm gonna go through it um, and, and do the best I can to kind of give you a, a nice feel of what tools you have for you to use. Are you getting the feeling that this is so much better than Jamboard or Whiteboard.fi? I, I hope you are because I, I'm just amazed by all the tools and things you can do with it. Um, that would be nice to see something in the chat. If you, if you agree or don't agree, you know, whatever you think. This is a little sticky note feature, okay? Um, you can type out 
Yeah, thanks, Robin. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, you can draw this out. You can type it out, whatever it is, some kind of sticky note. Oh, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Stephanie. Yeah, I think it's great, too. And it's free. Yeah, it's free for us. So, um, Sticky notes, once you're done, it appears here. This is just a nice little way to, you know, grab something. You know, if you want to talk about something later in the day, you know, you could do that. Okay, so perfect. All right, let's go back here. Um, here are some tools, and you may have seen these tools before because if you ever use Viewboard, not my Viewboard, but I think it's called Viewboard 2.1, the old version, it had some of these same tools. Now, I will tell you this, math teachers, if you're trying to make a straight line, this little ruler here is going to be your best friend, okay? You can turn it around, you can move around, I can close that out, let's see. Yeah, there we go. Um, because if I go right here to draw a line, you know, and do that, but if I want a straight line, I just go along here and it snaps. Well, it used to snap to you. I don't know what I did there. Let's see. Let me try that again. Well, it made a liar out of me. Well, before, I don't know what I did wrong. Um, it would actually, yeah, it stays. See, now it's doing it. I guess it's on the wrong edge. Maybe there's a certain edge you have to be on. Maybe it's not this edge, maybe it's this edge. But if you go along it, it will help you draw a straight line. Okay, that must be it then. When you're done, you just click the X and you're done with that. All right, let's go back to some other ones. Um, there's a protractor, there's a little die you can use. Okay, um, you can add as many as you want. So if I want more dice, and then I can just click on them, you know, give me some, some dice there. So that's always great for probability. Uh, maybe if you're playing Yahtzee or who knows what you're playing, but really nice just to have those there. Then you have a spotlight, you have a magnifying glass, you have a calculator. So you bring that out, it's pretty basic. All right, how's that? So you see all the tools that you have here. I won't spend too much time there. All right, let's go to the next one. Um, I don't have another camera, but I do believe that I've tried this out at a school before. If you have your webcam, I'm sorry, if you have your webcam, you're not using Zoom. Or if you uh, have a document camera connected, then I think that you can go ahead and drag those images in. Let me see if I can get one from here. I might be able to do that. Let's see if it works to Zoom. I'm thinking that maybe it did. Okay, well, maybe not. Yeah, forget that, then it work. So if Zoom is not running, then that's hopefully gonna work for you pretty well. All right, this is my Viewboard Clips. Um, it is a site where it's, it's like YouTube, but all of these have been vetted um, so that you don't have the, the teasers, the comments and all the other stuff. You can go in here and do a search. So I can search for math, let's bring that up. And you can find a few videos on different things. It is not a exhaustive list, but they are adding more of these all the time. So these are nice um, clips that you can use that you can bring into your classroom. Um, you can also search YouTube videos. Um, depending on the video, a lot of these actually come in and they don't have a lot of the um, teasers with them. So if I do like third grade math, Search for that. I'll add a page here, clean that up. Let's bring that in. Yeah, it creates its own little window for you to play it in. Um, it doesn't get any bigger than this, but you can play it in that window. And it, it takes Wow, we are going to learn so that. many cool things. Okay. So it's nice that you're in one place, one screen, one environment and you're bringing all those features in to your lesson. And if you go ahead and pre-plan your lesson, you can always put those videos wherever you want on whatever page you want and play them when you're ready to get there. So hopefully we'll have maybe um, another training where we actually get into a lot of the lesson creation here instead of just the basic tools. All right, this is a search for images. Um, this right here, these are widgets. And I think these will be fun for our elementary kids. Um, you will probably forget about where this place was because it's like this cloud and it's like, what is that? 
So if you go to the cloud here, they have online widgets, go to education. And these are just little gifts, little fun things that you can do. You can bring in some animals and so forth just to kind of do like a story time or maybe a story starter or to try to, you know, just bring something in fun with your kids. So I can bring in a lion here. Yeah, I want to more because he needs to roar, of course. Yeah, okay. And you can put him to sleep. So just some fun, interactive, safe things that the kids can do and you can do inside your, your, uh, your Mirai Viewport session. Yeah. So close him out. There's a few other things in here. So a bunch of animals. Um, I thought the sports were pretty cool and the nature were pretty cool. So I'm click on nature. And the desert, I really like that one, so I'm gonna pull that out. They have like this little group of camels and nomads traveling through the desert. You can bring some wind behind them. And amazingly enough, they're covered with sand. You know that. All right, so those are widgets that are inside, okay? Now, this next one is the throw feature. And we will talk about that in our next session. This is the pop quiz. And then this is the poll and survey. These take so much time, they really need their session of their own, okay? All right. So I know that's a lot of information, a whole lot. Um, down here, let's see, I'm gonna get rid of that if I can. Down here, I didn't talk about that that much. Um, this is just takes you between a presentation mode and preparation mode. I don't really see a big difference there. It's not that useful. This brings in whatever's on your clipboard. So if you have something that you've copied, maybe straight off the web, you made a copy of it, it's on your clipboard, it brings it in right here. This is an embedded browser. Now, I haven't done a whole lot of that using this because for me, it's just as easy to minimize this and then open up Chrome, okay? But if you choose to do so, you can have an embedded browser right inside here. It's a Chromium browser, which some of you may be familiar with that, but it also has nice little gateways to different things that you may be using during the day, such as Google Classroom or ABC, uh, you know, Scratch, whatever it may be, okay? And you still have your annotation tools right inside here, and you can take a screenshot of the browser and your annotation on top, okay? All right, see you, see you, Bryson. Thanks, thanks for coming. All right, now I know there's about three minutes left. I know that is a lot of information. Um, I'm gonna go back to my slide deck real quick and see if there's anything that I missed that I need to talk about, and I'm sure there is. Um, let me just double check. If you have some questions, kind of gather those up if you have any, and we can talk about that for a few minutes, all right? I think I did everything that I planned to do today. So that's that's pretty good. Oh, there's one more feature. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I'm gonna bring this over here. Yeah, so I talked to our representative and one of the coolest features that I think is coming is there on the floating toolbar, there should be a little microphone and that microphone will allow live captioning of your lesson. So as you're speaking, it will actually, actually caption it out and it can translate as well. So I asked him why we don't have that on our end, and he's been working on trying to get that to our domain. So hopefully that's coming soon, but I was really excited when he showed that to me in a Zoom with him that I did a couple weeks ago. It worked really well, and it looked like, um, it looked like what you would see from you know, Google Meet, you know, the translation and the captioning and so forth. So that's a great thing that's coming. All right, I have a couple things for you to do. Number one, ask some questions if you have them. I'd be happy to answer them. Number two, I want you to come to the next session if you can make it, because that's where you'll see some of the more of the interactivity that you can have with your students. But I think that you saw a great whiteboard feature here. Um, I do have a survey that I hope that you will complete, if you don't mind. Um, it is back on our slide deck. It is on slide number 36. It's an exit survey. And this is for me to do better at presenting and give you the information that you need and tell me what I missed, tell me what you like to see next time. And hopefully you got something out of what you saw today. So I appreciate you guys coming here. If you wanna um, unmute, that'd be great. And ask any questions, 
or you can use the chat either one.